Hi, this is Amy with the Hag Reads. Uh, hair's a little weird today. I I took a shower and then I laid down and I was reading and my hair did this really weird thing. I tried to wet it to fix it, but it's still not agreeing with me. Um, so here I am today. Uh, I did skip yesterday, um, not feeling all that great. Um, so I just thought I would save my spoons and come back at, you know, I feel much better today. I don't feel 100%, but I feel much, much better. So my book for today, uh, I have two. The first one is The Seance in Apartment 10, and that is by Ambrose Ibsen, uh, and he pre appears to write um, mostly this kind of book, the uh, supernatural, paranormal, uh, haunting type thing, uh, spirits in the house, land possessed by uh, evil um, entities, that sort of thing. Um, so this one, uh, obviously about a seance, which, you know, is the gateway board game of all evil. <laughs> Unless you want to go in a window and, like, say Bloody Mary three times or, you know, all of that kind of... But um, in the B-movie, in the B-horror movie genre, uh, the, the board game of choice for all evil uh, is um, seances and Ouija boards and... In this one, you get a seance with a Ouija board, so double your fun, I guess. Uh, the main character, and I didn't bother to write down the, the name, so it's just a generic female college student um, who is already in college, and uh, this uh, spring semester has ended, and here they are. They're going to take some summer classes, trying to get ahead with their degree, uh, moving into a studio apartment so don't have to live in the dorms anymore is tired of dorm life moving into her own studio apartment in a kind of shabbier part of town a kind of rundown building I think that there are uh, four or five stories and there appears to be one or two apartments on each floor so not very many residents and the building that she's living in only has one other tenant and from this other tenant, she finds out um, shortly after she moves in that the neighbor above here, her had uh, died in the apartment. Uh, and I think it was billed as a suicide. So here she is, freshly moved in. Her ditzy, her, you know, her ditzy college friends who are not taking summer classes uh, want to you know, help her do a little housewarming, get together and drink. Um, they go out, but you know, it's the summer and most of the businesses aren't open and the few bars are kind of dead and dull. So they have a few drinks out and then they come back with their, I don't know if it was beer, or it was probably boxed wine, I think is what they were drinking. Um, and so her two friends have come and they have brought along a third girl that uh, one of them is friends with and who the main character knows but doesn't, you know, have, uh, is not particularly fond of. That It's not a hate thing, it's just she thinks the girl is a little bit off or weird. Um, so that's the setup. So they come back and uh, she's sharing, you know, they're talking about the apartment and, you know, how nice it is to get your own place and all that sort of and all the little gossipy things that, you know, when girls get together, they talk about, especially if they're younger. Um, and then the third, the, it comes up in the topic that the neighbor above had died. And so the third girl promptly whips out a Ouija board and proceeds to engage them all in a seance, which uh, the main character does not want to do, and which the other characters are kind of hesitant about. But she uh, needles them into doing it anyway. And naturally, mayhem ensues. <laughs> How could you not think so? Um, so it turns out that there's a evil book, and there's some magic or demonic possession. Uh, there's a you know the bathroom mirror upstairs. There's something going on with that. And so uh, her apartment almost immediately becomes super creepy, uh, uncomfortable place for her to live. And she tries to stick it out. Um, But in my opinion, this is a pretty standard shtick for this type of book. And for me, it read almost exactly like um, a Netflix horror movie. Like, I could imagine it as a Netflix horror movie. The same way I can imagine bad sci-fi 
you know, you get a bad sci-fi movie on the sci-fi channel. And I remember that vividly from when I had cable. You know, you sometimes just want to watch a crappy sci-fi movie because they're entertaining in their own way. You never go into it thinking, this is going to be a great movie. No, you think this is going to be a horrible movie and I can't wait to see how bad it is. I uh, like the yarn that's so ugly. I love it. Um, there are B movies that are so bad that they become good again in their own way. Um, none of this type of movie is destined to be any kind of cult classic, but, you know, the, the thematic elements, the, the tropes, uh, they really um, satisfy over and over again. You know what to expect, and you get a little new twist here and there, uh, the way the tropes and the, and the themes weave through. So I always enjoy this kind of read a great deal. Um, I would recommend it for anybody who likes uh, kind of supernatural. There's no romance involved in this. It's just the, the girls, and it's mostly about the one girl who moves into this apartment. And a few other characters come into it, but really you're not getting it. There's no, there's no romantic component to this, thank goodness. Because if this was a sci-fi movie, it would be a group of kids and there would be, you know, pairing up and, uh, you know, all the, to, before you die, you, of course, have to have gratuitous sex and, and, and boob shots. <laughs> but um, if you like the supernatural, haunted, evil entity type of uh, thing then this would certainly appeal. And you go into it knowing it's not going to be a great book, but it will be a good, fun read. Uh, my second book is uh, The Great Airport Mystery, which is uh, Hardy Boys number 9. Woo! Almost to 10. Um, I have hit 20 with Nancy Drew, so I'm still trying to play Hurry Up, Catch Up with the Hardy Boys. Um, so in this one, um, we're dealing with uh, an airport, a small cargo plane, a mining company, and so the boys are trying to solve uh, the mystery of uh, missing shipments from this mining company. And uh, it involves uh, components for uh, computers, I think, or for electronics of some kind that are mostly made out of expensive metals. So like platinum and stuff like that, I, th I think is, uh, if I remember correctly, because I've, I've read like four more <laughs> since then, which I'll deal with those tomorrow. I don't want to do a whole bunch today. Just want to do one or two a day. Um, right now I'm a little bit behind because I've been sick, but um, I'm just going to treat it as if I just finished them. And in short order, I will catch up to where I am if I do it that way. And that way I'm always maybe kind of a little bit ahead. Uh, I'm trying to do two videos today, so we'll, and one will post tomorrow. Um, but uh, this way, I, if I have a day like I did yesterday where I just don't have the spoons for it, then I don't have to push myself. Um... So with the Great Airport Mystery, of course, uh, the boys are in danger on a regular basis. They have guns drawn on them. Uh, people shoot at them. They, you know, these are just much more, they feel much more boy to me. Um, they're getting run off the road in all of these. They're, you know, they get punched. You know, I don't think in any of the Nancy Drew books she's ever been punched. She's been tied up and left in a closet a lot, she's tied up and left in a trunk. Uh, I, I think she's had a couple of shots, gun, gunshots at her, but not nearly with the frequency of the Hardy Boys. And I have to tell you, between the two, I really prefer the Nancy Drew ones, even though the Hardy Boys ones are much more action-packed. I like the dynamic better. Nancy Drew, I think these were kind of written in a fairly uh, similar time frame, but the... These feel so much more <laughs> sexist to me, I guess. And it comes with the territory. I'm not offended by it. It's charming in its own way. But there are sexist and racist and classist things that are in these books that uh, modern readers, you know, probably go, because <gasps> there was one where in Nancy Drew, the girls, uh, they dressed up as squaws for some party, and, like, all of them did it, and everybody was like, ah, la, la, la. It, it, nothing of it. And I know that the Nancy Drew ones have undergone um, editing to remove most of that, but you will find it in some of the, you know, it's there's an undertone in all of these. Um, so you get a kind of a glimpse of the past where um, it was, um, you know, old white people being old white people. <laughs> um, that's where the seat of power lies. Um, so not a lot of racial diversity. Uh, all of the characters are white. Um, the, the one that bothers me with Nancy Drew is like all of the boys, like there's a, you know, Ned Nickerson, who's her uh, romantic interest, 
and who helps her sometimes with mysteries and his two friends you know there's like a boy for each girl uh, so Nancy, Bess, and George, they each have their, their male component. Um, all the boys are going to college, and they play sports, and they're very active with the college events. None of the girls are going to college. Nancy is 18. Uh, she's perpetually in this series, it seems like. And the Hardy Boys are um, 17 and 18, respectively, and they are still in high school. Um, and you would not guess it for the amount of time they do not appear to, to be in school. It's mentioned very occasionally, but really you would think that they were both graduate age. And I think if they were, they would probably be pushed to go to college, which is maybe why they're um, designated to be, uh, you know, ha not yet graduated and their friends have not graduated. But these are people who spend a lot of time not at school. And all of the girls in these are really, um, they're making the food, they're making the picnic lunches, they're meeting for parties and dates, but they, they're they not a part of the mysteries for the most part. That's very rare. Uh, with Nancy True, you get both the boys and the girls involved, and it's always the girls before the boys. Um, so I like that aspect of it. But why isn't Nancy going to college? Why aren't Bess and George going to college? They're obviously from well-to-do families. Um, and they don't do a lot with their time except go vacationing, and, and obviously Nancy solves mysteries, but she's not doing it as a job. Um, I feel like they're... They're just waiting to get married. Like, I don't understand why all the boys are going to college and, and Nancy is not. So that's my major beef with it. But um, the great, it was a good read. I highly would recommend either Nancy Drew or Hardy Boys for um, middle grade readers. Um, there's some violence, um, so maybe a mature middle grade readers. I can't imagine high school students wanting to read these, though. And um, they are, uh, I'm almost certain, let me see if I can grab one. There might be one in here. No. Let me see. No, these are rated as juvenile fiction, so they're not, they're not teen books. Um, as purported by my library's filing system. Um, so, I'm wondering what because they are there's gunshots and people get tied up and there's threats of violence although it's you know old timey threats of violence I think if these were written in a contemporary time they would have to be written much differently and you know there are Nancy Drew series that are like that are you know their spin-offs or their uh, reimaginings of the the originals set uh, some of them like a junior high, for junior high readers some of them for chapter readers that sort of thing but um I think if these were set in a contemporary setting, uh, both Nancy Drew, the Hardy Boys, and all their friends would be shot forthwith, and that would be the end of it, because nobody would be tying them up and sticking them in a trunk while they carried out their nefarious plans. They would just shoot them. The end. <laughs> and that's what I have for today. I will have, um, I think, two books tomorrow. I think I can fit into, I'm probably very little, uh, yarn gushing or, uh, talk of other things. Um, those are to come up. I have some topics that I want to cover and some things that I'm working on as personal projects for, um, personal development and for my own spiritual path. So, um, those will come into play, but right now I'm working on I'm mostly catching up on books and squeaking about yarn because that's what I'm happy about right now. And that's what I'm spending a lot of my time doing is knitting because, um, even when I don't feel particularly good. I can generally knit and um, because we want to move um, you know I've talked about us moving to Portland more than once um, as the thing that we'd really like to do um, I canceled my Netflix I canceled my CBS streaming I, um, I I still do prime every year because we buy enough stuff that it really makes more sense to pay for the prime membership and um, I do, I did not cancel my um, Amazon Unlimited because that's where my son is getting his books from. And I want him to read. I want him to continue to read. I think it's one of the best things you can do. Um, obviously, he's not going to college right now. Uh, he's saving that for a little bit down the line. He wants to save up some money so he doesn't have to take out as many loans. And I do think that's smart. And when he finally does decide to go, um, he won't really have to work. He may be part-time for just spending money. But I've agreed that he can live at home while he's doing that. Um, and then uh, at least he won't have to um, take on as many loans. So 
that's kind of what we agreed to. But because of that, I've kind of shut off. I don't have a cell phone anymore. There's no cable in the house now. I don't have Netflix. Um, and I don't have CBS streaming. All of which I enjoy because I, I like to sit and knit or um, do mixed media while I'm, I'm doing that. But I still have um, Amazon Prime. You know, they have a selection of things that are available for you. They're not terribly wonderful. But they're not, for the most part, completely awful either. And then I can still get things... Um, much later than I would be able to say through Netflix for TV series and stuff. My library is a little slow, um, but they do have a good selection of TV series, um, and they typically buy them. Maybe um, my library will typically get them six to eight months after they have become available for streaming through various online services, and so that is what I will continue to do. The only downside is sometimes you get episodes that won't play because the discs really do get scratched. Uh, they get a lot of use. So our library, I when I when we go, I see a lot of people um, not necessarily checking out books. They're checking out uh, movies and documentaries and TV shows. Um, that's what I see a lot of people doing. Not that people are not checking out books, but if you look at um, the demographics, you people find people my age and a little bit older. They're typically getting books, um, but people younger than me and as definitely people my son's age, you know, 18, 19, 20, um, they are almost always getting movies, and I don't mean a couple. I mean, like, there, there, there's no, and I don't know why there's not. When we lived in Ohio, the library had a, you could check out, you know, like, 10 or 15 movies at a time. Um, but there were, you know, 20 or 30 spaces available on your card. Here, um, you can check out um, 30 items. I, I think it's 30 items. And there's no stipulation that they can't be 30 movies and I I think that they have an attrition problem um, I know for a while they had an issue one of the librarians told me that people would turn in movies and forget the disc and so they've gotten a lot stricter on you know they check those all the time but I still have got home with a movie case that I didn't look inside before I left and I've had to go back and be like um, there's no movie in here and I always worry that they're going to make me pay for it. It has not happened yet because it doesn't happen very often. I almost always look, but occasionally I'll come home with a CD uh, with a DVD case and uh, it will not have the movie in it. But um, they don't replace things that get damaged. So, like, I have Hocus Pocus checked out right now. And it's one of my favorite movies. And when I'm kind of feeling down and I don't feel good, um, I typically get it from the library. And I think I just need to buy it digitally because the copy now is so bad it skips in several places um, it freezes up so I have to be careful watching watching it and they haven't replaced it and then like I like to do horror movie series so I would ask for all the screen movies well they don't have two anymore they are missing four uh, they have one and three um, and the disc for one now is very old and it's getting very hard for you know each time I, I have checked it out I notice the condition is worse um, so in that train of thought, a lot of the first movies in horror series like Halloween, um, Friday the 13th, uh, Scream, I Know What You Did Last Summer, that sort of thing, which are my fallbacks for Halloween, which you can't get on Netflix and you can't get on Amazon Prime. They, they are not available there for rent at that point, and um, they're, not, they're only available on disc through uh, Netflix. So what you get are whatever the leavings, the, the, the least popular horror movies on Netflix. And so I used to typically do 31 Days of Horror for Halloween. I would try and watch a, a scary movie a, a day. And I found that I wasn't able to watch very many through the streaming services I was paying for that were truly Halloween kind of movies where you want to go watch the classics. And so I find that disappointing. So probably in the next year, I will slowly buy one horror movie a month until I have a collection of what I like to watch at Halloween. Um, and I'm fine with them being digital content. I don't need the, the disc because obviously they do wear out. You're seeing it through the library and our library is not replacing those, I guess, unless they get um, suggestions, which, you know, um, Overdrive has streaming with movies now and um, they do something called Freeding, which has some movies, I think. And then there's another Hoopla is now available which I haven't used yet but it also has some streaming content and I don't know what the parameters are like what's on there but I have not specifically looked at Hoopla for that but um, normally if you request Halloween movies now 
they don't have the first of the movie, and if they do, it's in very bad shape. Um, and that's through the whole Scottsdale library system. That's like eight libraries. Zero copies of, like, the original Halloween movie. You can't get Scream 2 or Scream 4 now. They have, um, they have, they have they're removed from production. Um, and I will check the streaming portions of Overdrive and Hoopla and see what I can get. But I just don't think it's going to happen this year. And it didn't really happen last year because the selection, in my opinion, for what I, you know, there's a line with bad movies where I'm like, I'm just not going to watch that. But um, I, I reached a point with last year, I didn't do the 31 Days of Horror because I looked at what was available and I didn't want to watch it. And what I wanted to watch, I couldn't get without paying for it on Amazon. And no, they're not terribly expensive, but if you're paying 2 or three ninety nine per video over 31 days with my budget, that's just not workable. When I could just start buying them, most of the movies are, you know, only $10 for the digital copy of it. But you're talking about with Scream, that's a, a five movie series now with, uh, I know what you did last summer was three. Halloween has an endless amount, but I would probably only buy the first few. And I would not buy three because I had fuck all to do with the original movie at all. I've never understood Halloween 3. Although it did bother me because bug stuff bothers me. The movie completely grossed me out and I do find it terrifying for that for that reason. But um and with uh, uh Friday the 13th, probably only the first two or three um but not, you know, once once, you know, Jason's in space and, you know, Freddy versus Jason. Um, and then uh, with Netflix, you might be able to get the brand new remake. You know, they've done a remake for uh, Nightmare on Elm Street for uh, Friday the 13th for the original Halloween. They, they have remakes for all of those and Evil Dead. Like, you can't get Evil Dead through my library anymore. They have Army of Darkness, but not Evil Dead. And the remake was okay, but I really... <laughs> I am a big Bruce Campbell fan, so I like um, the original, and I, I would like to watch it every year uh, during the Halloween season, but it's not going to happen until I buy copies for myself. Um, so I wonder, I should check out the library website and find out what the process is for recommending things. Um, maybe, I don't know like how many people have to recommend it or how long it takes before they might replace something. But I'm guessing if nobody complains, and probably nobody does, um, because there are other options, and most people will just rent it if they want it, you know, that they will pay to get it, like, off Amazon or some other pay service. Um, but I'm kind of disappointed. The Scottsdale Library System is not horrible, but of all the places I've lived and used the library, I will say this is one of the most poorly uh, stocked libraries. I mean, they have a lot of new movies, but they don't get a lot of new books. They don't, uh, or it takes them a very long time to get it. And I know libraries funding has been cut significantly, but um, I got spoiled by the Ohio library system, which they have one of the best in the country, um, I was told by the librarians there. They win awards almost every year. And um, they had such an amazing selection of books. I could almost always find a book I wanted of movies, of um, of music, like just a phenomenal selection. So I miss that most about Ohio. That and the hiking. I like to go day hiking. And um, this uh, here, there is day hiking, but it's all in, most all in northern Arizona. And what's right around here, it is too hot to do. And I just don't particularly like hiking in the desert. It, it has never very much appealed to me. Um, of all the places I've ever lived where, you know, you're like, I love this or that thing about it. I identify the very least with the land here. I don't, the desert is beautiful for sure. Do not get me wrong. It has its own beauty, uh, especially sunrise and sunset, but it, it is its own amazingly beautiful thing and all different types. I lived in Death Valley, Arizona in the national park and you know, that's desert as well. It is beautiful and amazing, but as a place to live, it does not resonate with me, and I do not enjoy it. Um, I really, and I know a lot of people do, and I can understand why. It's stunningly beautiful, um, you know, but as a place to live long term, 
I just, I do not want to be here in 10 years. I, I don't even want to be here next year. I am responsibly allowing three years maximum because I do need to buy a car. Um, when we move, we're, we plan to live in a smaller town and I do need to save up enough money so that I can um, either have a down payment on a house or I can pay my first year's rent up front um, because I have not a very good credit history after my divorce and it's not going to be um, very good even if I wait three years to move. So I like to go in and, um, you know, that way I can live in a decent place. I don't have to live in a total slum. Um, we've accepted something less than what I want here because we were specifically trying to save money and it backfired on us a little bit. So we're kind of stuck here um, in this apartment and I do like the apartment, but for what we're paying, it's not worth it now. They raised our rent just recently and it was barely before on the line of what I found tolerable for the state of affairs here. And um, they raised the rent $75 uh, starting next month. And um, they cited higher property taxes and greater property expenses with uh, upkeep and maintenance. And I'm like thinking, I don't doubt your pro the property taxes have gone up uh, because there's a lot of new construction in the area and the housing market is starting, you know, is much more lively now than it was. You see a much higher turnover um, when houses go up for sale in this neighborhood. Um, but there's also a lot of new construction for townhomes, condos, that sort of thing. And they're not uh, normally, you know, where you might see, uh, they're starting at $400,000 and up. And these are considered um, luxury uh, complexes. Um, there are at least 10 undergoing construction and there are five or to seven more signs in this immediate area, like if within a two and a half mile radius of my own home. If I just walk around, that's what's being built and it has signs up that says they're changing the zoning and they're, and they're going to build, you know, an 80 unit on one, a 550 on another. There's a huge one going up across the street from my Denny's that is monopolating an entire corner block and then some across the street that used to um, have two restaurants, three rest, no, two restaurants, an empty lot, an auto shop, and the big empty corners on either side. So it's basically taking up half a city block here. Um, and across the street from that is another one and it's uh, also luxury and it is finally filling up. It, it, I think it's at capacity now. And that one um, is uh, Lofts, and uh, they started um, at a hundred thousand. No, five hundred thousand dollars was the start on that, and um, they had leasing. You could lease or buy. Um, this is just based on the signs. I have never gone inside, um, but that's like four stories plus an underground garage, and they're building something comparable to that across the street now. But it's much. It's it's at least the same size, but I think it's possibly bigger. So they have these, um, you know, 10 wine. They just finished Tom Scott down the road. If you go further towards the university, they just built three down that way. But in my immediate neighborhood that I could walk to within two and a half miles, there are 10 that are finished or um, finishing construction and five to seven more that are about to begin construction, probably coming up here at the end of the summer. Um, so that's raising the property taxes because they're all expensive, high-end uh, complexes or units for whatever of the type they're building. So I have no doubt that the property taxes have gone up here. But when they, the first thing they said was just their expenses for maintaining the property have gone up. It raised my hackles because they don't do anything here. They have a, a landscaper that comes and um, walks around for 30 minutes with a, a leaf blower and then he weed wax and then uh, he blows again. So he might be here for 45 minutes, but that's it. The weed whacker for about 15 minutes and the rest of the time he's just blowing shit around. He never trims the trees. He never actually mows the grass that my neighbor's trying to grow out there. So I don't understand it at all. But that's not to say that, you know, there are things that I maybe don't know about. Um, the neighbor next door is watering the grass out there. I'm sure their water bill's gone up because nobody, the individual units are not charged for water. But I'm, you know, the the rental company pays it and it's parsed out into your rent. But uh, other things that could have gone up are the collection for the trash. 
Um, what else could have gone up? What else do we get here? And that's that's all that I can think of, like things that they're paying for. Uh, and the landscaper might have raised their rates, but they certainly aren't doing any good. And they don't have to worry about it because nobody ever comes here from the property management company. They are located in Phoenix, um, probably 10 miles from here. And uh, the only time anybody ever comes out here, and it's the same guy, and he always, when you ask him if something's going to be fixed or repaired, I will check with the insert name of person at property manager here, and I'll get back to you. And what he means is, I'm never going to talk to you about this again. The only time he's out here is if there's a, a unit to rent. And he, they never seem to know when somebody has moved out. Both times he's come knocking, well, now it's three times. The lady across the way, she moved out um, right after the notices came out. And I, um, nobody tells them when they move. Like, that's the third tenant that has moved, and he showed up. And he's here to ask them about their rent or to leave a an, an five-day notice. And he they don't even know that the people are gone. It's the third time I've told him they moved out. Um, and he never comes with the keys. So he's always trying to break into the apartment that's empty. Um, so it, that's kind of like a keystone caper of maintenance. But the only time there's ever anybody from the management company out here is when there's an empty apartment. So, um, you know, I have a hard time accepting a rent increase from a company based on their property taxes when if they actually painted and fixed this up a little bit, if they maybe put 100000 into it, they could double the rent easily because that's what the rent is going for in this area. They could easily double it uh, and they might even be able to charge two and a half times if these were in better shape. Um, part of some of the roofing needs to be replaced the carport needs to be redone it definitely needs to be scraped and painted they have a termite problem which i don't think they're treating um because nobody's ever come to spray and i've told them three or four times there are termites um so that, from my perspective i'm offended by that but i also can't afford to move because they gave us 30 days notice we want to give you time to move out okay well i need at least 60 days to find an apartment in my price range in an area I'm willing to live um, because I have medical problems I don't have any savings now so I don't have any deposits for anything and if I move my electric um, I have to pay a second deposit and then wait for this to close out and uh, because my credit's not good but uh, so that sort of thing is like I don't have the things in place and if I did I would move I probably would because it offends me that they want to raise it $75, even though I know if they fix this up, like the whole place, if they emptied it out and they fixed it up and sunk uh, $100,000 to $150,000 into just making it look better and some cosmetic things, some structural things, um, they could certainly double their income for what's going on in the neighborhood now and what the rents are in this area. And that's just over the last two and a half years. Now, it used to be um, across the 68th Street, you could rent an apartment in uh, what we, what uh, residents uh, of, what white residents of the area call is Little Mexico. There's a heavy uh, Mexican, uh, that's almost exclusively who rented over there until recently. Um, and then, you know, Arpaio did his whole ice raids and everything. And so a lot of them went away. And that's unfortunate because it was a great little community. Lots of, uh, you know, interesting people. And I loved living over there. Uh, <laughs> you never knew. that, And people were friendly. And I really, it was a great atmosphere. And it's not so great anymore. But it used to be you could rent an apartment for 450 to um, 550 or 600. Um, and that would be for a one-bedroom pretty decently sized, um, maybe a little bit, well, probably the same size as this, but the formats on the other side of the street are very different. Um, and two bedrooms were typically corner units because uh, they're all kind of U-shaped on three sides, um, and then you would have a central courtyard. So uh, very inexpensive um, houses in the area are typically half a million or better, even though they're older homes, and, and a number of them in this area are kind of shabby. But um, recently, you're looking at five, uh, a half a million or better for a house in this area. Um, a, a renting a townhouse or a condo, there's a huge uh, two, three-story, you know, looks like a chalet kind of, very out of place for the um, neighborhood, for Arizona, 
you would maybe in northern Arizona, but you wouldn't expect it in Phoenix. Most most things here look like kind of Adobe. Um, where the rent is starting at uh, nine fifty and going up uh, towards two grand. And that's fairly common for complexes in this area. So you could find in, there's this section and then there's another one across the street and there's some houses in between, but they're kind of, that's what makes up Little Mexico. Um, but slowly the prices have been creeping up. So we got a pretty, what, what I felt was reasonable for the size. Um, and the plan was never for us to stay here very long, long enough for me to get through school. But my health has been so bad, we haven't been able to save the way we wanted to, or we would already be ready to move now. Um, but we're looking at um, at least one and probably three more years before we can comfortably have a cushion uh, to get where we want to go. And that's about the time my son wants to start um, college anyway. So that actually works out perfectly. And if we can move in the next year to year and a half, by the time he's ready to go, uh, we will be... Um, residents like so if there was an, if we could move in the next year to year and a half we would be considered residents it's residents in Oregon when he was ready to call go to college so we wouldn't have to pay out-of-state tuition um, so that's really what's going on here and I've rambled on for a long time so I will shut up now um, you can expect that uh, if you only want the book content I will always try and put it up at the front that way, if you don't care about the yarn or whatever else I'm talking about, you can easily turn it off and not have to um, be subjected to be rambling on about yarn or other things. Um, tomorrow, I will show my throw uh, and discuss at least one more book, probably two. And then um, I, I will show you the type of scarf I would like to make um, based off the color palette for the throw because I love autumn colors. They're favorite, favorite, favorite. Um, I hope you're having a great day. Happy whatever time of day it is for you when you're watching this. And I will see you all tomorrow.